My number one responsibility is to defend this country, to maintain its security. And, and I put the, a strong defense at the top of my priority list, and it's going to be maintained that way. The president. He is the chief of state, an educator, the planner of the nation's future, and the commander in chief of the American Armed Forces. President Carter sits down in the White House with the Secretary of Defense. He brings a hard military professionalism to the meeting. That's right. And then they'll be making plans so that if we do have a disturbance down there, or some. This president is an Annapolis graduate. He spent 11 years in the Navy. And he knows what he's talking about. Exercise the forces. Mm -hmm. And then, in the case of a contingency, assign the forces to them for operational command. Under for the last 30 years, the American president has had a an awesome responsibility that, that no other person in the history of mankind has had. And that is really the decision as to whether or not life on this planet, civilization on this planet, will continue. The heavy responsibility never ends. And a strong military is a deterrent to the outbreak of a war. But your presence in the Indian Ocean and in the Arabian Sea served to project the presence of the United States government and its military forces in a time when your presence was crucial to the maintenance of peace and to the provision of a stability in that troubled region of the world vital to all nations on earth. He is one of the smartest people I ever met. He's one of the strongest and most disciplined people I ever met. He has a very powerful religious commitment. Uh, that keeps him stable, that keeps him content, that keeps him from panicking. He is a very precise person. I'm faced every day with the uh, requirement to either approve or disapprove these kinds of weapons or others that might replace them. I need to know the level of operational capability of them. I think it's also important for our friends and allies and our potential adversaries to know that I have this intense interest in maintaining the level of training and the capability of which our own forces are obviously are capable. But even an annual expenditure of 135 and 6 tenths billion dollars does not bring the final security. The final security comes only when people and nations can eventually come together in their minds and hearts. And there is no question in my mind but that his tenacious persistence to bring both Mr. Begin and Mr. Sadat together was the one thing that paid the dividends. The Camp David Conference should be renamed. It was the Jimmy Carter Conference. <laughs> Jimmy Carter is a man that doesn't need a lot of pomp and circumstance. Those that are close to him, I think, would also say that he's a firm man, that he hears both sides, uh, that he's got mature and sound judgment. And that's the kind of president whose hand I want on that red telephone. Free, hot, free, free, hot, hold. President Jimmy Carter, a military man and a man of peace. <laughs>